The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time Wednesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We got PPI numbers out this morning. Producer price index a little bit hot ahead of tomorrow's important consumer price index CPI. We get Fed minutes today. We get some earnings going on as well. Uh, and we'll jump right into it with an S&P's giving back some of the gains back to a five minute chart. You see the sell off before that hot PPI number. We'll jump over to it in a moment, but you're talking about 0.4%, the headline number. The market was looking for about 0.2%. Core comes in at 0.3%. Market was looking for 0.3%. So the headline number, hotter than expected. Market gives back about 30 points, almost a full percentage point from where you were at about 8.30. We come right back into where you were at about midnight. When you see this market actually accelerate higher, we're sitting right at 3,600. NASDAQ 100. 10,860. We're positive by 15 points right now. You see the sell off though on that PPI number. We were up approaching 11,000, as high as almost 10,970. You give up about 100 points in the last half hour of trading. Dow sneaks into the red. You see the sell off, man. You talk about the sell off in the end of the day yesterday, right? Dow gives up about 400 points in the final hour and a half of trading. Russell right now, negative by one. Crude. Negative by 91 cents, trading at 88.46 right now. We get the gold contract, negative by $10 at 16.75. We'll jump over to currencies as well in a moment. Uh, notes and bonds, folks, ahead of CPI numbers tomorrow. We got the 10 year right now. Excuse me, sitting just above 111. You're negative by three ticks. We're talking about a 10 year yield, folks. Nine, excuse me, 3.96 percent, not nine with a handle yet. 3.96 percent. You check out that chart, right? Lower prices higher yield coming down the line on a consistent basis, man. Uh, it seems to be the trend, and the trend has not changed just yet. We're going to get some important data tomorrow for CPI. We get Fed minutes as well today, folks. Interesting stuff, and we'll jump over to that PPI number I talked about, uh, kind of the precursor to tomorrow's big number. U.S. producer prices climbed more than forecast in September. Final demand climbed 0.4% from August. The first increase in three months, but the market was looking for an increase, okay? They were looking for an increase on the headline number of 0.2%, 8.5% from a year ago. I mean, we know these numbers are coming, but boy, it is mammoth numbers on a yearly basis. But here uh, is what to say, and we'll talk to our man Kevin Hanks coming up after the first segment in about five, six minutes. Uh, we already know 11 of the 12 months of that data point that just came out, right? The only data point we don't know is the month of August. All the other 11 months that make up this 8.5% number, the market already knew. So don't pay as, as much attention to the headline number on a yearly basis because the market already knows 11 twelfths of that component. The one number they don't know is the, know is the monthly and it comes in at 0.4. Excluding volatile food and energy, the core. PPI increased 0.3% in September. That was up 7.2% from a year earlier. Now, the market was looking for 0.2% on the headline, comes in hot at 0.4, and looking for 0.3% on the core, that comes in line, okay? Now, where do the numbers come in hot? Here we are. While supply chain disruptions have generally improved, cost rose for energy, foods, and services. Two-thirds of the increase in the PPI was traced to services as prices for travel and accommodation, food and retailing, portfolio management, and hospital inpatient care, okay? Two thirds of the increase traced to services on that PPI. Uh, so shifts going on across the broad spectrum of the economy. Nonetheless, now we look to basically Fed minutes today. I think that's at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then we get CPI data about 24 hours from right now. All right, jumping around to some of those currencies as I talked about. We'll jump over to the dollar index to kick things off. DXY, on a daily basis, higher highs, higher lows, folks. You look at the pop we've had from about 110. We've got another green bar going on. You get the dollar index up almost 20. 
Uh, basis points, 20 ticks to 113.41. We're as high as 113.59 overnight. We take a look at the euro. 96.95, under 97. You see, just been chopping around at about 97 all week for the euro. You jump over to the pound US dollar, they have their own problems going over there, man. Pound back to 110.30. You were as low as 109.23 overnight in the pound. We jump over to the dollar yen. Dollar yen, how about it, folks? That's why you're seeing gold continue to struggle. Pretty remarkable what's going on in the dollar yen, man. Up almost a full point, approaching 147, right? Tying things back to when uh, just the rhetoric, I think it was, that they were saying that they were thinking about intervening to some degree, sent the yen back to almost 140. And since then, you've only had three red bars, and you've had the yen now trade to new highs recently, pushing 147, man. The yen uh, just continued weakness across the board. That's your daily. Put it back on a three-year weekly, folks. I mean, this run really began in March, but you were at almost parity, right? And it's not parity one for one because it's 100 to one or something like that over in the end. I should know. I was over there. Uh, in like 1996, 95. You know, it's crazy, folks. We'll do it. Uh, so I was fortunate, if you haven't heard it before, to study Japanese in, in middle school and high school for six years. Don't remember much of it, unfortunately. The programs were just beginning. But if you think back to the years, Japan was very successful at the time. Um, that was the year 1991, 92, uh, that they were thought to maybe take over in terms of technology, what was happening there. You back things up on the yen, okay? Uh, and I was trying to remember it just recently, man. And I think that what happened was is that the yen was all the way down to 80. Okay, you talk about strength, right? And this is this is what I was talking about. Look at all this strength in the yen, okay? As they became a technology powerhouse from 358. All right, now I don't know if all these are accurate US dollar yens. I think they are going back to the 70s. Okay, and then you see quite an acceleration into 1978. And the run really goes from 1985, man. You were at 256. You go all the way down to 80, okay, in the year 1995, 96. Now, I think I went to um, Japan, yeah, summer of 96 maybe is when I went there. Uh, so I did get a little bit of a lift. And I remember learning about currency conversions because I remember my dad telling me uh, that, yeah, they're, they're a little pricey. But guess what? We just had uh, a weakening and things are going to be a little bit less expensive for you going over Japan in terms of how many dollars you needed to translate into yens uh, as I went over there in the summer of 96 when the yen was chopping around at about 110 I believe as opposed to where it was at 80 but you know we we were not going to revisit those levels before but check it out folks I mean you're talking about coming into a level of 1978 potentially back that we have not seen let alone you're approaching levels that we haven't seen since 1990 now in the end 146 what's the high back here yeah well over the highs we saw in 2002 and what is the high we're talking about back here in august of 1998 right near that high man 147.65 on my chart for the yen dollar right now uh dollar yen i should say and it's not stopping folks and there's your 15 minute chart we're making new highs as i speak with yen weakness that's going to continue to weigh on that gold contract as gold. You got gold down about 12 bucks. You can make the case, man, with what's happening with the yen, that the, the, the gold contract should be far lower than it even is at right now for you gold bulls out there. That's the one I would keep my eye on. All right. And with that, we got the S&Ps giving up almost all those games. We're sitting right at 3,600 on the dot. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back, talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. We'll be back in three minutes. Don't go away. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P futures barely in the green, positive by three points right now. Dow just sneaking back into the positive by three points as well. NASDAQ positive by 27. All the markets slightly off the highs we had pre-market coming into a little bit of a hot PPI number. To talk about that, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Folks, every trading day at 12 noon Eastern time right here on Tiger TV, Fast Market from the TD Ameritrade Network, your host, Kevin Hinks. Tom White. They have an outstanding lineup of guests. They bring on the program. They break down the day's market action. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups using options, folks. If you ever want to get into them, if you just want to understand how they trade, uh, how they set up those trades, they do it every single day and all of them talking about defined risk. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, you know, I can sum up uh, the P today's PPI number in two short sentences. A little bit better, but not good enough, Tommy. Uh, these markets need larger moves in terms of inflation data to come down. Now, full disclosure, in terms of the four measurements in inflation that we get during a month, PPI is the distant fourth, as I've said on your show before. So I wouldn't overreact to this. The good news, about a nine-tenths drop in year-over-year -year core PPI, that's a good number. None of the numbers were on fire hot, all pretty close to expectations, with the exception of the headline month over month. They were looking for up 0.2. It came in up 0.4. Everything else, you know, year over year, PPI was down from last month. The core, like I said, was down nine tenths from last month. And the uh, Exclude and Energy Trade Services was unchanged from last month. So year over year numbers didn't get worse but they're not good enough for any type of a hesitation bought, bought by the Fed, Tommy. They are still on the job. It is pretty remarkable, Kevin, when you get these numbers. We get these numbers, um, and we're getting so many of them, whether it's the non-farm payroll you talk about. It's the number one num n number one monthly data point number out there that we just recently got. We get CPI, which is an important one tomorrow. Um, 
but I see that headline number year over year of 8.5 percent, and it's almost become so normal, for lack of a better term right now, where we're just seeing, and I think you've even said the term, video game style numbers, right? 8.5% become normal. But what you've also made a great point, and I, I brought it up early in the program, that we already know 11 of the 12 months coming, right? The only number we really right. didn't know there was the 0.4% number that's contributing to the 8.5% number. So I guess as we go forward in time, Kevin, um, those numbers should come down because it's factoring in so much of that inflation in the prior 11 months. But as you say it, every time I see it, I say 8.5%, man. What is this conversation of, you know, the Fed? Maybe they're pausing. Maybe what it is. They're just crazy numbers, man. And we get another one tomorrow morning. Uh, with that in mind, Kevin, the markets pull back a little bit, kind of getting comfortable right at around 3,600 on the S&P. Uh, what's your take as we come into the CPI number? I know you've said before many times the PPI, just like we understand, producer prices don't always translate into what's going down the line to consumers. Uh, but what are you thinking about as we come into that number tomorrow? Yes, yeah, some of the expectations for PPI or for CPI tomorrow aren't great, Tommy. They're they're a little higher than we'd like them to be. So I think all things considered, as we get through these numbers or work our way through them, that you know these markets are on edge. But I'll leave your viewers with one positive thought, and that is the six-month mark. If we get to a point where, like Charles Evans from the Chicago Fed said, if we get to a point where we're six months away from being significantly through this, then stocks are going to start getting bought on dips, and these markets are going to firm up because the stocks like to look out around three to six months. So that's why, even with these numbers, the markets may not be selling off as hard as, as some bears would like them to because if six months from now things are going to be you know, uh, significantly better, then, then the market's going to look for buyers here, and, and buyers are going to look to get in right here. But the question is, are we six months away? That we have no idea. Yeah, that's a great way to finish it, man. And we might be, you know, I mean, because I when they came out on um, and we get Fed minutes today, which should provide a little bit of volatility, uh, depending on what's said in there, of course. But when I think about it, Kevin, some of the expectations, right, 75 basis points at the meeting early in November, maybe you get 50 at the next meeting in December, and maybe you get 25 is some of the logic out there. That would be another percentage and a half that gets added in terms of hikes from the Fed. But I said to myself when that came out, okay, it's already October. Are you telling me that we're basically through all this hiking by by December? We're through it with only 25 basis points left. I said, and, and that's the case. Are we really right? We may be. If that's the case, though, Kevin, I said, well, geez, it might be a volatile three months. But if that's the case, then we're almost on the other side of that corner, man, and we'll see how it goes. But we get a lot of data between now and then. Be interesting to see how that October, November, December, let alone we get September CPI coming up tomorrow. With that in mind, Kevin, what are you guys talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today? starting to inch closer to uh, some real earnings. And, you know, Tommy, one last thing about PPI. Please. The biggest contributor to PPI was a 6.4% advance in prices for traveler accommodation services. So travel is still strong. What, where does that lead to? Delta, earnings Air, D Delta Airlines earnings tomorrow morning. And so, remember, we just got news from American Airlines yesterday. So, We'll, we'll be watching and trading Delta Airlines tomorrow morning, as well as PayPal in the news with some bad missteps, and then DocuSign today. So Delta Airlines, PayPal, and DocuSign today on Fast Market. These airlines, especially three great stocks, man, the airlines perk my ears up a little bit because, boy, quite quite a conundrum that they're in, right? Travel demand through the roof, folks. Come on down to Florida. I know I'm biased. Uh, Florida, Kevin, you know, we, I was just visiting a friend who had a work conference going on in Orlando. Um, busy times, of course. Uh, but guess what, man? Crude going through the roof, costs through the roof, trying to find pilots. You got Delta, man, trading at $28 right now. They were above 50 bucks last year, folks. They were above $45 this year. Uh, pretty interesting. Kevin, we appreciate the time as always man we look forward to the program at 12 o'clock today we'll be watching and we'll talk to you tomorrow morning thanks for having me on tommy have a great day 
Always a pleasure. Folks, tune in every trading day. You heard about it. They're talking about three great stocks. I imagine they'll talk about the PPI a bit, the market action, as they always do. And they set up, folks, hypothetical trades. Check them out. An outstanding program if you want to learn about options. And even if you don't trade options, folks, you should understand how they trade because there's so much information revealed into how that market is priced, the volatility priced into it. If you're trading equities, right, you can look at the expected moves uh, depending on how far out you're going on a time basis. And Thinkorswim, folks, TD Ameritrade, they are sponsors, but the amount of information that you can obtain from this platform itself, I tell everybody, my friends, my family included, I would use the Thinkorswim platform, especially if you're any type of an active trader, and that can just be um, on a momentum basis, on a short-term basis, the amount of information, folks, on that platform, I'll tell you, I, I created a Robinhood account early, early on in the pandemic when it was becoming all the rage, because I want to understand how it was, right? I mean, this the Robin Hood was all the rage. That's where new customers were coming in. I wanted to understand the platform. I wanted to be familiar with it, um, to just try it out. And it, the information on it did not compare for a moment to what you get on the Thinkorswim platform, whether it's on your desktop or on your mobile device. You can do so much on your mobile device, folks, with the Thinkorswim platform. Check it out, download the demo account. You can trade for free uh, and check out Fast Market. They'll be talking about three great stocks. Delta, uh, PayPal, they'll be talking the market as well, of course. S&P's barely hanging on to the gains right now. For, we're up by three points at 36.02. Stay tuned, folks, when we come back for the open. of looming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You have an S&P basically opens flat, 3,600 on the dot right now. A nice round number. Our man Basil Chapman coming up next. He loves those round numbers, folks. We trade from 3,630 prior to the CPI number down to about 3,598. S&P is just going into the red as we speak right now. NASDAQ 100, you're barely positive by six. Dow, now negative by 40 points. Russell, negative by two as well. Remember, we got Fed minutes coming up today. I had a CPI number tomorrow. As Kevin put it, CPI a distant fourth. He says it well, folks. Uh, he's got experience that many of us don't in this market. Uh, distant fourth, because consumer prices are what matters right now. We're seeing it. I mean, you see Apple, for instance, right, doesn't raise the price of their iPhone on the bottom level, right? That is a great example of you know that their producer prices of what they're paying is going up, but they're choosing to eat that cost on some of those iPhone costs when they push it down to the consumer level. Regardless of what's happening on the producer level, we need to know what's happening on the consumer level. That's the number we get tomorrow. It doesn't always translate to that degree, but nonetheless, you got markets selling off like it does, man. 35.94 on the S&Ps. NASDAQ down eight points right now. Dow, we might get a 28,000 handle again, folks. We got a pre-market yesterday. We're down at 29,193 right now in the Dow. Let's jump around to some of those currencies right now. Dollar index. 113.35 right now in the dollar yen, man. Just continuing. We got gold. Yeah, pushing 147 right now. You get the crude contract down to buck 15. Crude sells off as well, from 90 bucks down to about 88 dollars, 88.17 right now. And you have the gold contract down about 10 bucks at 16.75. Okay, jumping around to an article that caught my eye on um, Bloomberg this morning. Jamie Dimon's S&P 500 bear market brutal, far from unimaginable. Okay, and what they talk about here is that number one. Diamond says, don't be surprised if the S&P 500 loses another one-fifth of its value. And it's always interesting what smart people say, folks, okay? You should probably listen to it. Doesn't mean it's going to be accurate or correct, because who really knows the truth of where we're going, okay? Uh, and people always have their personal biases, whether it's as a CEO of a company, whether it's just the head of a family, whatever it is, your personal biases come into everything, usually. Uh, but some of the statistics in terms of the numbers in here, they are not opinions. They are straight out statistics and numbers, and they're worth knowing in terms of where we are, where bear markets go to occasionally in terms of the trough, how that relates to earnings, and what is going on in the context of where we are right now compared to the history of bear markets, okay? So, Judged by valuation and its impact on long-term returns, okay, Diamond saying an easy 20% would result in a bear market that is in many regards normal, okay? We are still pretty high above where we've been, folks, in terms of how far the market can pull back. A decline roughly to 2,900 would leave that gauge 39% below its January high, a notable collapse but one that pales next to both the dot-com and the global financial crisis. Now, I don't think this is akin to that. It's not yet. If, pers if inflation persists, you can't get it under control, and the Fed has to hike dramatically to really crush the economy. Yes, okay, this could be something like uh, the dot-com, the global financial crisis. Maybe banks in England start having real problems, right? That translates uh, to banks over here. I was listening to my dad's program. He was talking about that last night, doing a great job, saying our banks are okay, folks, but you never know who has one on their balance sheet until it all goes out, right? Who's wearing the bathing suit until the tie goes out? Nobody really knows. Now, the price implied in Diamond Scenario is roughly the peak from 2018, okay? That's all it is, folks. It's the peak from 2018, when the corporate tax uh, cuts took effect from Trump's tax return, okay? But given the force of the bull market that raged before then, it would cut annualized gains over the past decade only to about 7% in line with long-term averages. That's just the last decade, right? We have gone up so far. That is part of the issue. Look at this bear market even from 1980. You don't even see the pullbacks in 2000 and 2008. You do, okay? But you don't see the pullback that we have now in comparison to them. And it really has been a bull market since we're at, what, 666 in the S&P, right? Remarkable, up to 4,800, okay? Now, this chart here, S&P 500 in the black, Fed funds rate in the red. You think the hiking is over, folks? Look at this chart. Historically, not even close to where we're going to be, okay? Now, 
I don't think things will end up like the 80s. Hopefully they don't. We're in real trouble if they do. But as you see, the market could easily have more hiking coming in and more of a pullback possible. The dot-com and the financial crisis, absolutely above where we are right now. Now, at 34%, and that is the average bear market since World War II, Okay, but the drops vary enough that a 40% plunge fits within the bounds of plausibility. 40% plunge, folks, is completely normal going back to World War II. One reason this drawdown may have legs is that even after losing 15 trillion of the value, stocks are far from being obvious bargains. Now, here's the part to work about, think about. All that matters is earnings, okay? If you're thinking about buying a company, folks, okay, it doesn't matter how much you do in revenue. It matters how much money you make. Nobody is going to buy a company that takes in a million dollars in revenue a year and spends it all on costs, leaving no profit for the owner. Nobody's going to buy that company, okay? They're going to buy the company determining how many times, uh, how many years it takes to get their earnings back from what they're going to spend. At the low last month, the S&P 500 was trading at 18 times earnings, OK, that is a multiple that is above the trough valuation seen in all previous 11 bear cycles. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but that's a data point I want to have on my mind. As I'm saying, maybe we've seen a max pain situation. Uh, the counterpoint would be that at 18 times earnings at the low last month that were well above, not well above, we're above the troughs, though, in all previous 11 beers, 11 for 11. We haven't made it down to that. OK, in other words, should equities recover from here, this bear market bottom will have been the most expensive as in it's not a bargain yet, folks, if it's a real bottom bear market, okay? If you have cash on the sideline, keep some cash on the sideline would be my opinion right now. Maybe you put it in some short-term fixed income CDs. Maybe you go for three months or six months, man, three months. I think you're getting like 3.3%. Six months, nine months, you're pushing 4%. Uh, a year, you're pushing above that right now, I think. We had a period of a lot of liquidity. Given what bond yields are doing, I don't think you can say a 40% peak to trough is out of the question. Now, would the S&P 500 become a bargain if it does drop that 20% from now? Let's say the S&P 500 sitting at 2,900. Not out of the realm, folks. We just went over why it's not out of the realm, okay? It happens in bear markets all the time. You get a 40% pullback, okay? So let's say we go to 2,900. Quite cheap relative to existing estimates for 2023 earnings, okay? 2023 earnings right now are expected to be $238 for the S&P 500, a share, implying a P.E. ratio of 12.2. Those estimates, though, might get changed if we come into a recession, okay? Adjusting forecasts for just a 10% profit, excuse me, a 10% fall in profits, okay? So all you do is you adjust forecasts for a 10% fall in profits, yields and earnings multiple of 14.3 not expensive, but not screaming bargain either. Okay, and look at where we are on this chart. This is the S&P 500 PE sits above where it was at, um, at the end of all the 11 previous bear cycles. Currently we're sitting at that number, which is what, like 17, they had it up here I think, right, did they? 18 times earnings, that's what they're, what they're putting this number at. 18 times earnings, and that's the low. We're probably sitting right there right now, man, unless there's been some earnings revisions since then. Uh, but look at the previous earnings multiples, folks, okay? You're talking about 18, 15, excuse me, 10, 15, 16. We'll finish this up when we get back because it's an important one to keep your eye on, man. Earnings are everything, and these multiples are not too dire just yet. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have markets popping a bit. S&P's up by eight points. We trade down to a low right on the open, a low of 35.85. And just like that, folks, you jump almost 25 S&P points. Expect a volatile day. That's what I would say, man. Expect a volatile day uh, as we commit to CPI numbers tomorrow. And we have Fed minutes coming today. That should put a little fire on things as well, depending on what they said in those Fed minutes. Markets, you put this thing on a daily, folks. Uh, hard to deny it's a critical area right now. Coming into the low, 35.71. Yesterday's low, 35.79. Today's low, 35.85. Just within the stone's throw, man. See how we come into that level and just below where we were trading at, 36.39, the low from June. I've been saying before, folks, if you told us in June that four months from now in October would be getting the numbers that we're still getting in terms of we just got a PPI with the headline inflation number of 8.5% on a year-over-year -year basis, uh, I'm not sure the market will be trading at that same price level. We'll see where we go. S&P's up by 10. NASDAQ catches a little bit of a lift, up by 55 points. Crude, pulling back a bit right now, but check out crude. Crude down about buck 50 right now at 87.91. Uh, and the one thing I want to look at real quick is the 30-year, folks. You check out the 30-year. And I know we got a caller we're going to go to in a moment, but checking up this 30-year, folks. You put the 30-year on a weekly you talk about channel lines, man. Since August 1st, folks, you're talking about two and a half months. The 30-year hasn't seen a green bar yet. We just traded from 145 down to 124 right now. You got the 10-year sitting right at about 111.06. Pretty similar action. You did get barely a green bar at one point back there in August. But, man, you talk about a trend. We'll see what that number is tomorrow. Uh, and before you know it, we're going to be coming into the Fed meeting November 2nd. Okay, we got a caller. Let's jump to our man Jose in Lakeland. Jose, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for that great introduction. Hey, oh, I could do how, my best. Wait, do what get, are we talking about? How do we get sorry, go ahead. No, what are we talking about? Please. What are you what are you looking oh, for this I, morning? I was man? gonna ask, how do we get this Ponzi scheme back on its feet? I've got a pro I got a, a, I'm a problem solver. Here we go. Biden today, Biden signs an executive order for price controls. Tomorrow the Fed does its pivot. By Friday, this Ponzi scheme is back on its feet and off to the moon. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, any government price controls, number one, you'd want to be in that. And I'm not sure it would work, which is why you wouldn't want to be in it, right? 
But uh, at some point, listen, I don't know if you heard Kevin Hinks yesterday. He made the reference, and I, I chuckled a bit because the conversation has already began. When do they start cutting, right? He said, listen, things go dire, man. There's no buyers in this market. That is when the Fed will step in. Uh, it's an interesting game theory perspective, and I know it's not a game, man, but it is a game to some degree in terms of they need to make sure the market knows we're going to hike until – you know, we don't need to hike forever again, right? And then everybody will get worried enough that they'll pull back. So it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. They don't have to go through with the hikes. They just have to convince everybody they're going to go through with the hikes. Uh, and I don't know if we're there yet, man. We just got 8.5%. Yeah. Tomorrow's going to be a big number. And hopefully, hopefully, Jose, we can meander this where there's no desperation where they have to come in and cut that bad because, yeah. number one, we you. have to get inflation under control. So when when can the Ponzi scheme get, get back going? Not exactly a Ponzi scheme, but when can the Fed begin propping up this market again, right, with their with their actions? Um, things have to get either really bad or we have to see some real data on an inflation yeah. basis that is helpful. I, I understand. And I don't, yeah, I got you. I don't, hey, quick question on supermarkets. You've, been, you've shopped at Winn-Dixie. You've shopped at Publix. You know the stock differences. Publix, you don't want to leave. Winn-Dixie, you want to run for your life. When the door is actually open to get in the store. Do you think the state of Florida doesn't want Publix to have a monopoly and they're holding up Winn-Dixie and preventing a bankruptcy? Uh, I had, that's the first time I hear about that one, man. I'm not familiar enough myself. I will tell you, Publix, I agree, they're a good experience, folks. They're pretty expensive uh, for that good experience. Yes, if you focus, if yes, you focus on are. the BOGOs, you, you can save some money. Um, but if you're shopping for every single item in there, man, they are pretty expensive. But I tell you, Jose, Target, Target's pretty expensive these days too, man, from Publix. Walmart, they usually get it done. Um, not exactly yeah. the best shopping experience, in my opinion, that degree. But Publix... You know, depends what you're going to do. But I'll tell you, man, I used to use Instacart more often than I do. And everybody, I think, is feeling that pocketbook when you're going out there, man, because percentages on percentages on percentages, whether you had, you know, a fee and then you got every items more and then you got the tip on top of it, on top of a grocery bill that's going up, what, 10, 25 percent easy right now. So, yeah, I imagine that's hitting people. You know, I imagine Publix is aware of it, man, because... Yes. Because the prices are becoming undeniable, right? You see those prices yeah. and you say, man, maybe I should just shoot over for the essentials at least to Walmart, right? What am I doing buying paper towels at Publix, man? That doesn't make sense. Those types of conversations, for sure. Exactly, exactly. Plus the door. And when Dixie closed on my shoulder yesterday, I think we have a lawsuit. <laughs> well, you're in Florida, man. They got plenty of lawyers if that's your deal, for sure. Jose, I appreciate the call as always, man. I appreciate Thank you listening. you. Listen. you have a great one, man. Folks, give us, a, give us a call, 877-927-6648. And like Jose's talking about, like Kevin Hinks is talking about, man, you figure out that Fed pivot, you get three to six months ahead of it, folks, the markets are going to charge higher. There's no optimism right now at 3,600. And one of the notes I started off the week with is just simply talking about when you're pricing in the volatile moves, okay, some of the notes, I think it was from JP Morgan, saying, listen, this could be another negative 5% day. You get a hot CPI print, I think the expectation is for 8.1%, something like that. Maybe somebody in the den can help me out. I think it's 8.1% the market's looking for. And specifically, they were saying, you get a number that's like 8.3, 8.5, you better watch out, man, because who steps in as a buyer if you have consumer prices running hot again? Right? Where is the buy in this market if you have consumer prices running hot again? I don't know, but it's not right now, folks. But guess what? It will be when the Fed has some ammunition to say either things are working, we can pause, or the other side of that is, which we don't want, is that things are working, they're not working as fast as we wanted to, but we have to step in to some degree because... Um, there's been a liquidity crisis or there's been um, just too much damage done and that maybe they're not having the impact they thought with rate hikes, okay? That will not be as beneficial because that means the market's in big trouble and that means the market's probably down at least another 10 or 20% from where we are, we're at, maybe 20%. Now, I've done this comparison before, okay? Uh, the world's not going away. The stock market's not going away. Okay, we will be okay. It's not the end of the world. For some context here, which is kind of what those numbers were doing when they were talking about, hey, we're still at multiples that are not at the troughs of usual bear markets. The reason why, folks, is because we just went from 666, 665, 75, 
in March of 2009 up to 4,800. Now, that would be cherry picking a low. I'm not gonna cherry pick a low. I'm just gonna show you some context here that when President Trump got elected, the market was trading at 2,200. And then people were pretty happy with the stock market when he got elected, right? They were even happier when you passed tax cuts that sent so much cash to the bottom line of companies that just gave it back in basically share buybacks and dividends, okay? So the stocks shoot up from there. But just imagine, we are still well above. All that would be, okay, as they said, all that is doing is trading back into where you were coming into 2018. It was a pretty good time coming into 2018, folks, when Trump got elected at 2200 and the market was doing well and you shot up to a price point of 2800. That's all it would be doing, okay? That's not the end of the world. It'd be quite a shock to some degree, but not the end of the world. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. Don't go away. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, up by six points. NASDAQ up by 36. I meant to mention last segment, usually we talk to our man Teddy Kegstats Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Teddy uh, had some travel. They couldn't get out of today, not on the program. Uh, he will be back next Wednesday at 40 past the hour. And folks, check out his Tiger Forex report. Currencies right now, currencies, yield, controlling so much of the action going on. S&Ps up by five points at 36.05 right now uh, and jumping around. So yesterday it comes out, right? Uh, 
Biden new rule proposed for the gig economy. Uber crashes from about 28 to 2294. You're back to 2528. Uh, here's what I'll say, and I'm not informed enough, is that I don't think that no matter what the Biden Labor Department does, that maybe that would withhold the types of challenges that are probably coming down the line. And I don't know how that can get challenged. I don't know enough about it. Uh, maybe that's why you have Uber reverber reverberating a bit to a little bit of a higher price. But I imagine with this Supreme Court, folks, going down that line, because it is a very complicated issue, okay, in terms of where you classify those workers because of how intricate it gets. There's there's one portion that you want to look at, how important those workers are to the totality of the business. Of course, uh, Uber couldn't function without their quote-unquote contractors that are drivers, right? The other side of that is you're hiring them whenever they want for a specific job. They're able to go from your company to the other company if they want. They do fall within those lines enough. I believe they put it to California. California is even one of them to be host um, considered gig workers. The tough part is everybody's going to gig. So we're going to have a um, portion of society that is classified as a gig worker. And I'm not sure that's the best thing for society overall, as guess what? That is happening more and more and more and more and more as technology takes over. What I will say is I like Uber the most of any of those stocks, man, because uh, Uber, taxis, they're taking over the world. OK, DoorDash, food delivery, that goes in the likes of the grocery store, man. People pulling back, paying for that premium service for food delivery, but you can't pull back from taxis, folks. Uh, you don't have many other options when you want to take a ride like an Uber. Thanks so much for starting your trading day, folks. Stay tuned. It should be a good one. We got Fed Minutes today. We got CPI tomorrow. Basil's up next. Live programming all day, folks. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Have a great Wednesday.